Um, ranking teams. We've got some categories we've put together. Sitting pretty, needs work, twitchy bum, and red alert. Where's my Over to you, boys. Sitting pretty. Sitting pretty, we've all agreed on uh, Penrith, Manly, Storm, Warriors. Yeah, I, I think, well, I still think the Broncos will win it. Got key players out coming back. And for me, the Raiders. The Raiders, uh, they're, they're in the right foot. They are such a well balanced team. And you know what else? They've got some young forwards. They've got some really good young forwards. I think that's why they need work there, mate. Savage. Um, How fast are they in the outside mate, backs? Savage. Like, you get people like that with that, that much speed, and you get them improving, then that makes, that makes a difference to your position, you finish. They, they take you into semis and then into the big game. Chevy Stewart's in this week. Yeah, Chevy Stewart's in, He's and then quick. obviously He's Ethan Strange. Uh, mm. I think you work with them over the year, and they can win your grand Well, finals. we thought with Jack Whiten. Jack Whiten leaving last year. Mm. We didn't know if Ethan Strange was going to play 5'8", but it seems like the more responsibility on Jamal Fogarty, his game's gone. It's been brilliant. Right there. This is a hell of a coaching performance from Stewart. Oh, it's, so. It is. Could be his best. Yeah. Mm. Could be his best. And not only that, people within the club, the recruiting of certain players. Mate, Zach Hoskins, what a great get. Great signing. Mate, at the start of last year, he wasn't doing much. You know? like he had a couple of games at Penrith the year before. And then you know, last year, his season just improved, improved all the way through. Mate, he was the first three games, he was the best player in the comp just about. Yeah, he's back this week. Okay, let's uh, bring that graphic back up. What's our next category? Needs work. Oh, we've got Needs the twitchy work. bummers. Need work, Cowboys. I'm not sold on them yet. Knights, they've been... You know, just better than average sharks. Well, they have to do it in a big game. The Dolphins have they got depth to go deep? Something, Freddie? Uh, I just think what I said with the Bulldogs. I just think they're not far away from being a bit more consistent. Oh, you're talking twitchy bum. Uh, no, I've got needs work there, and then I've got the Broncos. I just don't. I don't know. I just think. Uh, Reynolds is such a wild card there. He's, he's got to keep himself yeah. fit. Yeah, but mate, Payne hasn't played. Well, that's mate. the other thing. Reese Walsh hasn't played. Pia Cura, the other tear away. Mate, for me, they're, they're sitting pretty. Well. I think they're the most talented of all the teams. Um, but I, I just feel like, yeah, especially without Reynolds' influence, they struggle a bit. <laughs> uh, Twitchy Bum, I think we're all got the same. Is this you're talking about when you got manipulated over your head? No, that's the hemorrhoids you're talking about. That was sore when I woke up. Boys, Mitchell Moses, kid. Mitchell Moses out. They say until round twelve. Yeah, really. Their you. season could be over. Yeah, very hard to win without your best players, especially when he's such a dominant force, especially with his kicking game. He's up there with the best kickers in the competition. Have they done enough in recent years to try and groom someone to come in and fill in for him? I mean, you look at you look at the insulation. Uh, sorry, the insurance policy that Penrith have had. Jock Madden's at Brisbane. Teams have acknowledged that they need to have someone who can come in and fill key positions, and Paramount haven't done that. Well, they've signed uh, Dejon Arcee a couple of years ago. They signed mm. him. And <clears throat> once again, I think everyone's waiting for him to pull the trigger on Ethan Sanders, the young halfback. He's a good player. Well, here's the gun coming through. Played with Ethan Strange. Mm. Uh, he was like the New South Wales player coming through. I'm sure he played Australian schoolboys and all that, so... Uh, well, he's not there this week. It's, it's Brown and Seven again. Brown and Arcee, the halves. Yeah. He's dropped. He's dropped the other. The other young. Well, lad. you don't. Want to, we, we don't know what's going on inside or. <coughs> Blaze. Of Blaze to a lung. He dropped in. Mm. Uh, I think they. I, I. I like them. I think they'll win this week against the cows. Back at home. Yep. Gee, the cows. How could you get a read on them? Mm. Well, you can't. They come yeah. in and out of the game. When yeah. they're flying, they're good. But they. They would have got beat on the weekend, if not for that intercept. Mm. Mm. They were gone. Mm. What about the Roosters? In trouble. In trouble? Uh, I think they're going to be there. I think they're going to be there. Do you think they'll make the eight? I just thought a couple of teams have sort of stood up to them, which is a bit of... Which is something they did really well in, in Las Vegas when they played Brisbane. They did it obviously against South. So it's obviously there and they can get up for it, but they're a team that people like to, you know, judge themselves against the Roosters. And when you watched uh, Canterbury, really, Although they dominated Canterbury. Mm. Very Can aggressive. Canterbury it was a very aggressive game. Canterbury dominated the Roosters. Yeah. They, they bullied us. It them. was 26-0. Mm. Yeah. And just for a bit of context too, Gus just on the podcast said that 
while the Roosters obviously had some duress there in the second half, he reckons there are six or seven busted. Canterbury players who were just busted mm, and would busted. normally have not stayed on the field. So actually, to hang on and win that game was, was a credit to them. The Penrith game was the same. They just pretty much dominated. They had a bit of a run late in the game I still against can't Penrith. I still cannot believe that Penrith beat the Roosters that night. Mm. Flogged them. But what, the interesting thing was, when they were down to 12 men, they actually scored about 20 points, didn't they? <laughs> Do you reckon they changed the way they attack? Well, I think what happens is you just, throw, you just throw the keys in the air. Well, they're really... They're, they're, they're battling for numbers throw this week. Throw the keys where? In the bowl. <laughs> I was just looking at me. Um, here's Robbo's stats as coach. He's been there forever. They missed the finals once under him. Here's his progressive winning percentage. He's down on 40% this year. Last year, 54. So, except with the exception of that year where they missed the finals in 2016, last two years are trending down. Does that say much? No. They're... Uh... They're just coming to one of those stages. A lot of those players that won the grand final in 18 and 19 also getting to an age and those big decisions are being made. No, he's going nowhere. Nowhere, I hope not either. I think he signed to 28. I think they re-signed re him last year or... Mm -hmm. and, uh, so is Lindsay Collins. He'll be going re -signed nowhere. today until the end of 2028. Oh, it's a good sign. Yeah. They've missed he's him. When he's out, they Absolutely. miss him. Absolutely. Well, I heard him talk actually might have been yesterday or the day before. And he, he just talks no nonsense. Like, it's all about effort and, you know, we've got to turn up and be in the right attitude. And he says all the right things. He's, he's so wholehearted. He's a beauty. This year, NRL on 9 is your one-stop shop for all footy. That's right, Freddie. Not about the highlights. Action. Seven days a week. Billy and Gus podcast. Get that on your drive on the way home. Immortal behaviour. Grab a seat on the couch for that. And, of course, my favourite, Freddie and the Ames. The best footy brains, the biggest games. Don't trust the algorithm. Subscribe to NRL on 9 and get all your entertainment there.